If you've ever played Fallout, or even if you haven't, odds are you may have seen this iconic mascot winking at you and beckoning you to open up your wallet. But who is this crazy Swede? Where did he come from? And why does he wear a suit made out of the flag of Sweden? To answer these and other questions, I tracked down original Fallout creators Tim Kane and Leonard Boyarski. Their response was pretty much the same. Who are you, and what are you doing on my property in the middle of the night? Why are you dressed all in black? To my disappointment, I wasn't able to get the answers I was seeking before the police arrived, and I have now been ordered by the court to stay more than 500 yards away from them at all times, so I now have no choice but to turn to the good old internet to find the answers. Fortunately, while I was doing some research for a previous video, I came across a very old interview with Tim Kaine from 2002 on the Duck and Cover website. At the end of this interview, Tim answers a question about who came up with the idea for Vault Boy. Ah, Vault Boy. All I remember is Leonard telling T. Ray Isaac to draw something like Mr. Moneybags in Monopoly. T. Ray Isaac is one of the unsung developers behind Fallout. The majority of people sadly believe Todd Howard created Fallout. Those who have a little more understanding of the history of the franchise know about Tim Kaine and perhaps Leonard Boyarsky, but there were others, and T. Ray is one of them. But no one is making any videos about these people, so, as usual, it is up to me to do what no one else will dare. T. Ray has a page on IMDB which shows the credits of the games he's been involved with over the years which of course includes Fallout. Most recently, he was involved with Predator Hunting Grounds, which came out in 2020. T-Ray also has a presence on Twitter where, among other things, he describes himself as Vault Boy's dad. The actual story behind the creation of the Vault Boy character is a bit more complicated than that. There is an article on the Fallout Wiki dedicated specifically to the Vault Boy character, and here you can see the crude original concept art for the character. This was drawn by Leonard Boyarsky, and as you can see, it is mostly the same as the final design, but not as refined. T. Ray refined it even further and finalized it. One thing I don't quite understand is why Leonard Boyarsky asked or needed T. Ray to finalize the design. Leonard is himself an artist, and he seems to have already done like 95% of the work when he handed it over to T. Ray. If anyone can explain this, please let me know in the comments. There is also someone named George Almond, who apparently worked on it also. George Almond seems to have worked on various games at Interplay as an artist throughout the 90s up until the early 2000s when his career in video games seems to have come to an abrupt end. Right about the same time as Interplay went bankrupt, and probably for that exact same reason. But even if his career in video games is over, he appears to still be active as an artist with his own website. IMDB also credits him as being an actor in a number of films. Now, I've covered the artists responsible for Vault Boy's depiction in the original Fallout. I would like to take a moment to give credit to Brian Menzi, who was the artist who handled all of the new Vault Boy graphics in Fallout 2. Since Fallout 2 reuses many of the same graphics from the original Fallout, it's important to note that Brian only handled the ones which were new to that game. According to an old tweet from Chris Avalone, Brian Menzi came up with a billboard slogan. Presumably, this is referring to one of the billboards in Fallout New Vegas, but I can't tell because the original tweet Chris is responding to no longer exists. Brian wasn't satisfied with merely reusing assets from Fallout 3, so he set about creating these various posters which you see throughout Vault 11 in New Vegas. So anyone who ever says that New Vegas is just a copy and paste of Fallout 3 and reused assets from Fallout 3 is either ignorant or they are lying through their teeth. 
Truth is, the game had new assets from the start. Obsidian artists like Brian Minzy made certain of that. Now granted, they only had 18 months, and it would have been nice if they had more time to do more, but it is a blatant lie to say New Vegas was just a copy and paste from Fallout 3. That's not true at all. According to New Vegas project director Josh Sawyer, Brian Menzi also deserves credit for creating the Boomer mural you see at Nellis Air Force Base. So for any of you people claiming New Vegas is just a copy and paste of Fallout 3, I invite you to show me exactly where this Boomer mural exists in Fallout 3 that Obsidian copied and pasted it from. Take all the time in the world you need. I'll wait. One piece of art Brian Minzy created, which you will never see in any Fallout game, is this infamous Vault Boy image for the child killer trait. This image was deemed to be too controversial for the game, so it was cut out, and instead replaced with a more toned-down image of a sinister-looking, stereotypical, mustache-twirling villain. This image also, I believe, was designed by Brian Minzy. Brian Menzi remained with Black Isle until it was shut down in the early 2000s. When he then joined Black Isle's successor, Obsidian Entertainment, where he remains to this day, Brian has continued to work as an artist on many of Obsidian's games, including their recent Outer Worlds. Since Brian has always been at Obsidian and still remains there to this day, this disproves the trolls who spread lies by claiming that all talent had left Obsidian. These ignorant people don't have a clue what they're talking about. So far, we've covered Leonard Boyarsky, George Almond, T. Ray Isaac, and Brian Menzi. All of these artists have been involved with the Vault Boy character, but believe it or not, they are not the only ones. As a minor footnote, the Vault Boys in Fallout Tactics were drawn by a man named Edward Orman. In Fallout Tactics, the character is erroneously referred to as Pip-Boy, which has caused confusion which persists to this day. But Vault Boy is the correct name for this character. Pip-Boy is the computer device you wear on your arm. There's actually a Pip-Boy character that was also designed by Leonard Boyarsky. If you've ever played the classic Fallouts, you may have noticed this red-haired, pointy-eared elf on the plate of the Pip-Boy 2000. This character is the actual Pip-Boy, and he is entirely unrelated from Vault Boy. The Pip-Boy character is the mascot of the Pip-Boy device. Vault Boy, on the other hand, is the mascot for Vault Tech. In the original games, Vault Boy did not actually have an official name. At no point was he named throughout the entire game, but there is a reference in the manual referring to him as Vault Man. This was likely an error because it was never repeated again throughout the entire franchise. I'd also like to briefly mention that there is a female version of Vault Boy called Vault Girl, as well as a black version that appears in the intro to Fallout 2. But other than cosmetic differences, they appear to be just variations of the same character, so there's not much more to say other than to point out that they exist. But anyway, Ed Orman is the one who handled the design of Vault Boy in Fallout Tactics even though that game erroneously refers to the character as Pip-Boy. And I don't have anything further to say about him other than he's worked on a few other games, including Bioshock 2. So, the question of who is the father of Vault Boy is a lot more complicated than you might think, because it seems that Vault Boy happens to have many fathers, not unlike the Fallout franchise as a whole. While there are unquestionably some key people who deserve more credit than others, it was a group effort. T-Ray may deserve credit for refining and finalizing the design, but Leonard Boyarsky came up with the original concept in the first place. And, in a sense, Vault Boy might even be said to also have a mother, a 
woman named Natalia Smirnova deserves credit for all the Vault Boy images in Bethesda's Fallouts. Fallout 3, 4, and 76. These were her doing. Of course, based off the work already done by the original creators in designing this character. Natalia is still an artist at Bethesda and seems to be involved in many of their games, including Oblivion and Skyrim. I often criticize Bethesda for their poor handling of the Fallout franchise in various respects, but I see no flaw in the work that Natalia has done in her depiction of Vault Boy. I believe that Natalia, George Almond, T. Ray, and of course Leonard Boyarsky have done a fine job in the design of this character. I do not know why they designed him to be a stereotypical Swede, however, and that is something that the world may never know. But one thing which we can know is the why of it. Why was this character created in the first place? In an interview with Matt Barton from a few years ago, Leonard Boyarsky explained that Vault Boy was created to be the solution to a problem. After we got over the, like, yeah, we're doing this 1950s thing, um, it never even occurred to me that people wouldn't like the whole Pip, uh, Pip Boy. Jeez, I almost made the, the Cardinal Sin there yeah. calling him the Pip Boy. Um, <laughs> the Pip Boy was the guy who looked like the Bob's Big Boy guy. Um, no, the Vault Boy, which Vault we, Boy. we never had a name for the whole, the whole time we were making the game. Um, I never, ever even considered that people would have a problem with it because to me it was just a solution to a problem. And that problem was how do we convey all of these different things that you can do in the gate of the game to the player without having, you know, 500 icons, which was how we started out. So it was never, it was more of a solution to a problem than it was like, this is this great artistic statement. And it just happened to be funny and, and add to the setting. But although the Vault Boy was a solution to a problem, it also created a problem when Interplay attempted to license the GURPS system for Fallout. Steve Jackson, the creator and owner of GURPS, did not like the Vault Boy character and objected to allowing his system to be used in the game unless Vault Boy was removed from it. So when Steve Jackson, I think we were all surprised because there was no one at the company had any kind of issue with it. Um, unlike some other things we did, like the ending and, and things like that were kind of like raised a couple of eyebrows. Um, so yeah, when Steve Jackson came back and said, yeah, I don't like, he didn't like the intro and he didn't like the, the vault boy, which were two things that most people at the company were saying they loved about the game. Um, so, you know, Brian Fargo, to Brian Fargo's credit, he's just like, um, well, then I guess we're not doing GURPS. And he went to Tim and, and asked him how, how difficult it would be to take GURPS out. And luckily, because GURPS is modular, we could just take out all the GURPS stuff and put in our own skill module and combat module and we'd be, we're ready to go. The team was forced to decide between Vault Boy or GURPS. In the end, they decided to keep Vault Boy. And in place of GURPS, Chris Taylor created the new special system to replace it. But that's a topic for another video. Necessity is the mother of invention. The Vault Boy character was invented because of a necessity. The special system, in turn, was created by the necessity of needing a replacement for GURPS, which came about because the owner of GURPS hated the Vault Boy. Vault Boy and the special system, the two go hand in hand. We would never have the one without the other. The inspiration for Vault Boy came from Rich Uncle Pennybags, aka the Monopoly guy. As Tim Kaine explained in his interview with Matt Barton, Vault Boy is always smiling, no matter how bad things are. What I thought was really interesting was that the government really tried to downplay how horrible the uh, the aftermath of nuclear war would be. I mean, they, they, we actually watched a video showing kids just get it, crawl under your desk and the fallout won't, won't hurt you. And it's like, now we know, no, you're going to breathe it in and it's going to be much, much worse than this movie is letting on. So we kind of adopted Fallout Boy as our mascot. He's always smiling. He was always cheerful, even when he was, you know, his hands were being blown off by his guns backfiring or he was happy and smiley, you know, taking a bath to get all the radiation off of him. But in reality, that's not how it was going to be. We loved making social commentary in Fallout. 
Tim explains that one of the core themes of Fallout is that you can't trust your own government. A big part of Fallout was you don't trust your own government. Uh, we made it quite clear that the government was lying to you. Um, that there needs to be a you know check and balance. That the military needs to answer to civilians because the military in the Fallout world pretty much took over. Um, corporations were taking over. I mean, you saw that the vault you were living in was built by Vault Tech, and all the products in there were built by Vault Tech or a subsidiary of Vault Tech. So your Pip Boy, your Stealth Boy, everything was uh, related to this one overarching, uh, massively invasive company. Um, we even had uh, inside the Fallout manual, there were, we had a page of describing other manuals you could buy from Vault Tech, which made light of all the horrible things that could happen after nuclear war. And, and, and basically this company was making all of its profit off of people's fear of the war. And if a war actually happened, they planned a profit off of that as well. And I think we were just trying to comment that while this is all exaggerated, a lot of this is true in our own society. I don't think anybody doubts that you know, Halliburton profited off the Iraq war. Now it's profiting off of the BP oil spill. They just, uh, it's, it, it wouldn't hurt if that game or other games helped raise the consciousness of the players who played them just a little bit and made them look at their own governments and their own society just a little more critically. A great man once said, quote, The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Those who are ignorant of history may not find these words terrifying, but history is full of examples of the government doing terrible things and even killing its own people. For example, there was the Tuskegee syphilis study where the U.S. government experimented on and denied treatment to syphilis-infected African-American men while lying to them by promising they would receive treatment. Instead, they were denied treatment and experimented on until they either died or the study was finally shut down after it was exposed by a whistleblower. This is just one of many examples throughout history. And in the Fallout timeline, we see something eerily similar happening with the Vault experiments. If you are lucky enough to be one of those people who get accepted into a control vault, then you were lucky. But if instead you ended up in one of those many vaults where a cruel experiment is being conducted, then heaven help you. Those that led you into this vault, like poor naive Boxer, in Animal Farm, being led to the glue factory, are lying to you, and the Vault Boy character is helping them to peddle this lie. Vault Boy smiles reassuringly to mislead you into believing that everything is fine. A study conducted by researchers at the Max Planck Institute found that people more often judge someone with a smile on their face to be more trustworthy and honest than those who did not smile. It seems to be a strange quirk of human nature that people are so predisposed to trust a smiling face. And the bigger the smile is, the more likely it is that people will believe this person in whatever they say and trust them to be honest and sincere. But I ask you, should that really be the case?